I want to bring in Executive Director of the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association of Australia, Ben Morgan, to get into concerns over foreign ownership in our aviation sector. Over the weekend, it was uncovered that Virgin Airlines is in talks with a Chinese conglomerate to open a pilot training school in Tamworth. Ben joins us now at the studio here in Sydney. Ben, just take us through the concerns your organisation has in relation particularly to training schools uh, and the involvement and the privatisation of a lot of our regional airports. Well, look, what we're seeing, Peter, is a really uh, troubling trend here in Australia that more and more of our aviation uh, infrastructure and business ecosystem is being sold off uh, to Chinese interest. Uh, and the the impact of this is now really starting to be felt because for many of these uh, Chinese companies that are coming into Australia uh, to take advantage of government policy which is allowing it, uh, we're creating an environment where local Australian businesses simply can no longer compete because we have this almost bizarre situation where many of these Chinese businesses don't necessarily need to operate to a profit. And that, that's a really bizarre but very concerning situation in which you now have smaller, uh, small to medium size aviation enterprise trying to compete uh, with large multinational businesses or businesses that seem to have a supply of income, a supply of revenue, a supply of cash uh, that's coming from somewhere. Yeah. Uh, it's a really dangerous situation for our aviation uh, business community. Ben, I often have Dick Smith on here to talk a lot of common sense. So we talk about population, uh, we talk about aviation issues, uh, we talk about horticulture in Australia and we're going to feed our population. One of the things in this area he talks about is the fact that Australia is facing a shortage yeah. of Australian pilots. Now, that seems laughable to me because we seem to have aviation schools right around the country. He says, no, you're wrong, Peter. They're all starting to close down or they're being bought by foreign entities. That's right. Please explain that. Well, Peter, first of all, Dick Smith is absolutely correct. And he can absolutely be trusted uh, on this issue. We've had the largest number of business closures across the last 15 years uh, in the history of aviation in this country. Uh, and that is happening because of three uh, important uh, issues, which we call the perfect aviation storm. And the first of those issues is that we have an ever-increasing uh, environment of wedding cake layering of aviation regulations. And we've arrived at a point in 2019 where businesses are shackled. Businesses are no longer competitive. They don't have the ability to be agile within the market to do the things that they need to do uh, to operate efficiently. And so under this incredible weight of red tape, many of these businesses have simply been forced out of the industry or into bankruptcy. Quite concerningly, Peter, I was contacted today uh, by a business who heard that I was coming on the show. And that business right now in Victoria is, is facing bankruptcy. And if they collapse, eight buying schools will close with them. So this is a real, it's, it's real, it's happening, and it, it needs a lot more publicity. The second thing that's going on inside of the aviation industry is we're now feeling the devastating long-term impacts of airport privatisation. The government approximately 20 years ago sold off all of our airports. Uh, and for, I guess, the general public, this is, it's probably an issue that most people say, well, you know, how, do, how does this really hurt us as a nation? Well, airports are what keep the aviation industry running. And right now, Australian enterprise, small and medium-sized businesses have been priced out of having their businesses at airports. Now, you ben, can't... Ben, let me just jump in there. Yeah. Is, that, is that because they're fattening the markets up, this, these airports for sale? Are they... Are they what charging increased prices for access to the hangar? Or what, yeah. What's what's been the difference that you've noticed since they've been privatised? Peter, we've seen airport access charges that is leasehold the, the the amount of money that a business has to pay to keep the business uh, at a particular building on the airport increase as much as four thousand percent. In the last 20 years, we've seen user fees, parking fees, um, you name it, there's fees and charges. The government exposed our industry through privatisation to an ever-increasing ratchet of costs. And now in 2019, it's become so expensive that you have to be a very, very wealthy business coming into the industry just to make a start. 
The third thing, Peter, that I, we like to talk about in the context of this storm is obviously now the overinvestment by Chinese companies. And of course, I've just covered that as more and more Chinese business seek to take control of airports, they seek to take control of flight training schools, uh, we're seeing the industry uh, basically become a playing field in which small to medium-sized businesses here in Australia, local hardworking Australians just can't compete. And so it's driving more of us out of the industry. And just quickly, we'll have to go in a moment. I could talk about this for most of the night because it's a real worry. Is the issue when these uh, schools are bought by foreign entities that they will bring, let's say, pilots from or would-be pilots from China to Australia to be trained here, take up all of those places, then go back and fly in China? We've got nowhere to train our own pilots. And then, unfortunately, we're also forced to go overseas for pilots. Is that the Absolutely. real worry? Peter. And also, sorry, just and, and how much... There's a transport minister federally, Michael McCormack, uh, the deputy uh, prime minister indeed, the national party leader. Uh, this is his portfolio. How much is this on his radar? Well, first of all, Peter, the collapse and the failure of Australian of Australia's general aviation industry, which is where all commercial pilots start their careers. So everyone that sits at the front of an airliner started in the small to medium-sized general aviation industry. The collapse of our general aviation industry lays squarely on the shoulders of the Deputy Prime Minister. It has been through an express lack of political leadership by this minister uh, to take control of the situation and to actually act on behalf of the participants of the industry. Instead, uh, the Deputy Prime Minister has been captured by the bureaucracy and he's become a champion for red tape. He is now a champion for making the industry far more complex and seems to be supporting the sale of the entire aviation industry to Chinese interests. So it's on his shoulders. He's the guy with his hands and the guy with, on the wheel. And I think that Australia's voters uh, coming into this year's election won't forget this. Well, just on that point, I mean, we're about to go into an election campaign. I know Dick Smith has made it clear tonight that he will be backing an independent, I don't know who it is yet, an independent to run against Michael McCormack at the next election. I presume you're going to start to ramp up your own campaign to get action in this area, Ben? Look, Peter, the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association about six months ago made clear to the Deputy Prime Minister that if we did not see positive change for the aviation industry and a determined effort to reduce red tape, to break down the wedding cake layer of regulations, that we would look seriously at fielding a candidate. And what I can say to you is I am giving a serious consideration at this point in time in putting my own hand up for this because we believe passionately that this industry deserves a future. The hardworking men and women of this industry deserve the right to be represented. And right now, that is not happening. Here you go. Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association of Australia CEO, Brad Ben Morgan. Thanks for your time Thank tonight, you. Ben.